Hello there, everyone. I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the Lassos of Europe, in which we're going to explore the Nenetian Free Army. Depopulated yet unbroken, the people of the Nenets have had enough with the collapse of the Holy Russian Empire and the beginning of the reign of the Imperial Airborne Brigades of the north of Russia. Rallying a force of former free aviators, native partisans, and miscreants who fled north to escape the region's men. Alexander Zyvyagin have called for the liberation of all the north from the forces of banditry and perfidy in the region, nearly exhausted by the region's purges, with only the home field as their advantage. The Nanets partisans, nevertheless, are willing to die for a free Nanetsia, and the end of the hated raiders which have done them so much harm. And we're led by a Mr. Alexander Zyvyagin, who looks very thick, very thick. I love his hat, though. Twixt forests and mountains. When the sun climbs above the horizon, the village of Karpova arouses from their deep sleep. Children, or child and elder alike, step out from their wooden houses after the morning meal to dedicate their minds and to focus on the daily chores of survival in the harsh Siberian woods. And so far has been the collective memory of their little isolated community upon the mountains. A blessing in disguise it came to be as the rare yet haunting news of the state of Russia at large came to the little community. A sense of simple, blissful ignorance settled in the recent years of, for them. A fear that, if any of them acknowledged what happened to the country at large, the miasma of death that became their motherland wouldn't reach their little idyllic paradise. People would come from their less inconspicuous neighbors, carrying scars, horror stories that the people of the village simply didn't want to hear anymore, until eventually nothing but blissful, welcoming sounds came from the roads leading to them. No news was good news, as far as the people of Kartbova were aware, and as long as they simply paid no attention to anything outside their borders, besides the occasional pilot landing from this free army to resupply and rest. They were sure that they would continue standing, living by the same tick of the clock until the end of time, same as it ever was. And we have a lot of libertarian social support here with good old daddy Alexander. <clears throat> And up next, we should have, hopefully another event. Ah, oh, Guardian Angel. And this guy's in Nenezia. Antonina guided her plane, constantly checking outside her cockpit to the shape of the timeless Alb River. She watchfully gazed at the landscape around her, eternal in its serenity, yet undoubtedly scarred by the hordes it had seen. The remnants of charred villages, ruined carriages, and every sign of the communities of her youth gradually were swallowed and reclaimed by the snow and woods. Her mind wanders momentarily to the woman before her that guided this plane. What would they think? At that moment, she gripped the yoke harder, eyes daring to burn with unshed tears as memories of friends gone flood her mind, and a single question that she wouldn't ever ever take before starts to worm its way into her consciousness. A certain noise breaks her from her stupor, glancing to her left, a distant dots are seeing in the horizon, and a certain familiar, odious V-pattern, target practice just what she needed. Her mind instantly cast away all unnecessary clutter, hands automatically moving to well-familiar switches as she leaned the plane down, picking up speed to align her aim to the targets below. As a roar of her engine announced her presence and the spit of her machine gun tore the helicopters through scrap, she couldn't help but smile and relish in the same feeling so many women shared in the sta uh, self-same cockpit. I smell, I love the smell of burnt Nazis in the morning. Very cool. And we have the National Spirit, depleted population. Oh, depleted, so depleted. And of course, a tasty salted earth. Mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. Ooh, weapon improvements? Very nice. But, Greywater report. Scouts have spotted chemical dumps at, uh, at Lake near Ocklinzo. Poisoning attempt by Imperial Airborne Brigade highly suspected. Non-essential personnel have been allocated, scouted, to properly clean the site until the foreign elements can be safely removed. The quality of the water and whatever lay in the river should be assumed to be compromised. Recommended action. Due to the isolation and aspect of the manor of villages under our banner, and the lack of manpower necessary for a proper information campaign, it is recommended for every pilot of our Air Force to spread the information at every restock and rest landing, and to carry their own water and food and report any afflicted village. Patrols around the all casino and surrounding streams must be heightened to safeguard our water supply for the future. Pilots should mark on their, their maps their rough estimation of location for future cataloging. May them pay for this. Cowardice is a mother of cruelty. And let's see. Academic base, it looks like it's going up, as well as poverty is doing better. Rudimentary equipment or industrial equipment as well as industrial expertise is also going up. What else is going on here? Research facilities, how are you doing? Nothing is going on there. Army professionalism is not going any better, as well as nukes, but turning back the clock. It's a true father. The carriage finally stops. The horse, neighing as a stock lodge man, hops down from his seat in the carriage, patting the horse's cheek to calm him down. Yes, Alec, this is it. In contrast with the adult, the youth is a scrawny thin teenager, pulling the cloth of his carriage and glancing at the abandoned wooden manor in the woods. The house looks completely abandoned, the once vibrant oak giving way to a grayish, almost sickly tone, the smell of mold perceptible even from his distance. 
Is this where you and Uncle Vic... Oh, sorry. Ouch. Don't pull my ear. We don't talk or speak of that name of the monsters in our home, Alec. Do you want to make your mother cry again? No, no, no. no. I'm okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Just stop pulling. It hurts. The finally, finally relents. The youth all but rubbing fiercely his ear. The father takes a deep breath, remembering the per... No, person is an insult. The animal that he once shared a roof and a life with. You don't remember... You were really small, but this is where I used to live. Your grandfather's grandfather... <clears throat> built this house himself with his own two hands and worked this land to sustain his own family all the way down to us. We weren't for Kaganovich. You would have been raised here, not in some small hole in a wall in Ch Chelyabinsk. Anything's better than what's out there, father. The sun stretches between the two of them before the taller man nods. Glad you agree. Wake your mother and sister in the wagon. I'll set a campfire and tomorrow we'll work to put some life back into this house and then we will survive. We have enough supplies to last a while, but we must stand on our own now. Your mother and sister will clean up the houses tomorrow morning and we'll be out to get anything we need. Does does that mean you'll finally let me use your gun? No, Alec. You have your own. Oh, very nice. We don't have that much manpower, obviously, but a core population of less than 100,000 people trying to defend against the Imperial Airborne Brigade. Hmm. Not nearly enough. <clears throat> Zev Yagen's crusade. We've heard what you said, Zev Yagen. Oh, really? Could you... Because you could have fooled me. Aglaya Kuznetsova. Captain of the Third Fleet rubbed her temple, staring at her leader with a withered, if patient, glare. The man looked downright furious, yet flustered, either by his rage or the cold up of the landing road. She couldn't be sure. The air howled, yet it didn't seem to diminish the fury of the man's voice as he raised his voice again, motioning to the warehouse at their side. We can't just shrug and offer the other cheek when those psychopaths kill their people and poison our land even more. Haven't we suffered enough under the region's insanity? Now we just have to twiddle our thumbs and keep waiting until Melkik finishes the bloody job? She listened to him he, as he, the leader of them all, screamed himself hoarse as his argument collapsed more and more into an irrational, hateful speech against everything that befell them. The Russians that put them into shackles, the Empire that turned these shackles into a noose, and now the bandits that seemed to give the final twist to break their neck. Finally, all the rage and vitriol spilled out of him, leaving what really was Alexander Zivagin, for those who close to him, a scared, tired young idealist, in a land marred by justified cynicism, or cynicism. We don't have the people, Alexander. Everyone's getting tired of fighting. We fought for ten long years. What did we get from it? The land is even more broken than when we, I was up there shooting at the crowds myself. But you can't draw what simply is not there anymore. We can only endure. We will die. For the first time in quite a while, Aglaya was shocked, staring at the broken person in front of her. Alexander can't muster the energy to look her in the face, pitifully looking at the ground beneath them as if it could give any of them any answer, any consolation, or any help at their situation. We can't keep hoping that we can shoot them down forever. They'll just keep chipping more and more until they reach Surgat. And then, his sentence was left unfinished. A grave sound stretched between both of them. And before Agalaya could say anything, he turned and went the way he came, his posture all but defeated. Dark clouds over the blue skies. We can only move on and let the fat fate dictate the rest. Nenitsia Ar Free Army declares war on the Imperial Airborne Brigades. All right, my friends. So technically, you're not supposed to be able to win, but I use comments commands to see what happens if we were to annex the Imperial Free Brigade, and there's no sort of event, there's nothing really here, which is a little disappointing, but if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow in another video. Thanks for watching, have a great, great rest of your day.